Today we'll be doing a teardown of the E-Circuit mini-powered speaker from the dollar store. And we'll also do some uh, very simple audio quality testing on it. So far you can see it does in fact work, but that's about all you can say for it. And if you look to your left, you'll see a purple flying monkey. Not often you see flying monkeys in this area. Especially rare is it to find purple ones. And in the right corner of this video is a small icon that can be used to subscribe to this channel if you're not already subscribed. Contrary to what you would expect, there actually is an unboxing experience. It has a box. And if you can open it, you've got the speaker unit as well as a little paper manual. And it's just actually an FCC statement. So that's actually not very exciting. I guess we should go ahead and move on to the teardown because there's not really anything exciting in the paperworky stuff. We expect nothing exciting at all, but we'll get there. We'll find out. All right. There's a pretty beefy speaker. 4 ohm, 3 watt. This might be worth it just for the speaker. Make your own amp for it, of course. Uh, it's, it looks like maybe they're supposed to heat stake this, and they didn't. So it should just kind of pop right off. Only really vaguely dead. Enough to be a nuisance, but not enough to actually, like, hold it in. Now that it's free, we can flip it over and find actually a little bit more than I was expecting. So here we can see the actual main circuit board. Audio comes in here and gets right down that way. This is actually the power switch part here. The main chip is just a... LM4871, which is uh, a little 3 watt audio power amplifier. Although based on the spec sheet, it looks like it claims it'll only run a uh, 4 ohm, which is what the speaker is at the 4 ohm speaker at 2.5 watts. Uh, so you're getting a little less power, though I don't even know what this advertises. It doesn't really even advertise any power on it, so it doesn't even have to... It doesn't matter, it doesn't even advertise having any specific wattage on the thing. Perk of this chip is very limited components, so you can kind of see that, that there's not much to it. just very basic filtering, and then it just power in and runs the speakers. So the positive rail runs around here and up over here. The LED's ground, or negative lead is attached directly to the negative. And the power goes through a 1K resistor right into the LED. So it's powered directly off the main power bus, and then that kind of routes out to different parts. It almost looks like this joint here is shorting. I don't know if that matters or not. I would check it. You know, it's possible that this joint's tied to the ground directly anyway, but I, I don't think it is. I don't think you actually have one lead that's actually directly to ground, but I can't prove that. But that's the other output, and I guess the speaker. Very easy diagram. All right, so I've reattached the speaker and I, in a slightly better position. So let's put this back together and see if that changes the sound any. If you were desperate, it produces a result. It can be heard and things like that. If you were maybe creative, you could make your own cable to turn these into a $2 stereo set. If you were to have two and then you broke out a Y cable that went to each of them and then that would give you stereo and it would probably work reasonable enough. I'll look into making a tiny amplifier circuit in this housing and we'll see how well that works. Cause just This could be a nice little grip it, hold on to it, and talk to it walkie-talkie style thing. It's kind of interesting. Or you could also even do, uh, put a push-to-talk button on it, and you could have it be a uh, some sort of CB-style 
handset thing where you know you push the button and it's using it as a microphone and they let go and that lets you receive and everything as many instruments have done before so that would be an interesting thing to try but for the moment that's a quick look inside. Mm -hmm.